The ligaments that support the knee are extremely important, but a lot of patients have questions about what do we do to the ligaments during knee replacement surgery, and that's what I'm going to cover in this week's video. Hello and welcome back. If you have not already subscribed, please subscribe. You get updates when videos like this come out. And if you could take a moment right now and click the little thumbs up like button below, it really helps people like you find content like this. And today um, I have show and tell for you. I brought lots of implants home from the office to help drive home and answer the question all about knee ligaments. Now there's two types of ligaments in the knee. We have collateral ligaments and we have cruciate ligaments. Now, if you're looking at your right knee, if you take your hands right now and put your hands on your right knee, your right hand is on the outside of your knee, and that is right where your what's called LCL or lateral collateral ligament is. And your left hand is on the inside of your knee, and that's where your MCL or medial collateral ligament is. And that is similar to this implant here where I show you where this is the inside or what's called the medial collateral ligament and this is the outside or what we call the lateral collateral ligament. Now, inside the knee, so deeper than what you and I can touch from the outside, are two crossing ligaments. These are called your cruciate ligaments because they cross. And there's the ACL or anterior cruciate ligament. And the back one is called the PCL or posterior cruciate ligament. The anterior or ACL attaches to the front of the shin bone where the PCL or posterior cruciate ligament attaches to the back of the shin bone. That's where it gets its name. Now, what a lot of people are usually surprised to hear is that a number of arthritic knees do not have an ACL. So the anterior cruciate ligament may have been torn many years ago and that has led to some instability and arthritis. But very often when we open up an arthritic knee to do a knee replacement, the ACL is not there. The important thing to know though is that the outside and inside ligaments, the MCL and the LCL, are extremely important for stability during a total knee replacement. So we preserve those ligaments. We have special retractors that will go in to protect them from instruments such as saws, but the goal is to preserve those ligaments. The ACL commonly is actually resected. So if we go in to do a knee replacement, it is very common practice to cut out even a normal looking ACL. And you might be going, whoa, wait, well, you're gonna cut out my ACL. Now there are ligament or there are knee replacements on the market called bicruciate retaining knee replacements, where the goal is to retain both of the cruciates, the ACL and the PCL. They're not super common. They have been hard for many surgeons to be able to put in and balance the knee well. Sometimes the knee just doesn't bend and straighten well, what we call kinematic conflict. So great in theory, but as I show you the knee implants, the implants have sort of been designed to make up for some of that laxity that is there when you don't have an ACL. Now the PCL is commonly kept depending on where you go in the world. Now the PCL has probably been one of the most controversial debate topics in orthopedic surgery for many, many decades. When I trained on the East Coast, the East Coast was predominantly a PCL sacrificing area where we would go in and cut out the PCL. And what I was told and what I was taught over and over again was that we remove it because it's diseased, the, the knee is arthritic, and also there's what we call rollback. So when you do stair climbing, there's a, an amount of rollback of the thigh bone on the shin bone. And the, the post, which I will describe and show to you shortly, actually more normally recreates that rollback. And it was harder to expose and balance a knee if you kept the PCL. Now, what's interesting is that I then went out to the West Coast to finish my training and I did my fellowship there where it was predominantly a PCL retaining area. And what I learned was all of those things were false. That it was not harder to expose, it was not harder to balance, and the thought was that by retaining that ligament, we retain some of your feeling of where your knee is in space. We call that proprioception. And more importantly, it was bone and soft tissue conserving. Because when we do a PS knee, a 
posterior stabilized knee because we've cut out the PCL, we have to cut a box in the femur. And by doing so, we remove some of your bone, which could be really important in the future if you have to have a revision. So that's sort of the brief overview of the ligaments, four major ligaments, MCL on the inside, LCL on the outside. We plan to keep those. They are important ligaments, but I will describe to you later what happens if they're diseased, damaged, torn. And the other ligaments, the ACL, most commonly is resected even if it's there although frequently it's not there when we do a knee replacement. And the PCL, the posterior cruciate ligament, is really one that's up for the debate. You're gonna have some surgeons and school of thought that cut it out and do things with the implants to make up for it. And you'll have other surgeons that preserve it and use implants that allow for knee range of motion with the PCL intact. All right, so now it is show and tell time. So I'm gonna start from what we would call least constrained and explain to you what happens all the way up to the most constrained total knee replacement. So this knee replacement is called a cruciate retaining knee replacement. This is an implant made by the company Stryker called the triathlon, um, shin bone part, thigh bone part, inside knee, medial collateral ligament outside knee, lateral collateral ligament. They're designed to stay because they give side to side stability. But in this particular implant, what you'll see is this rope in the back. The PCL again attaches to the back of the shin bone, the posterior cruciate ligament. So as the knee bends and straightens, that ligament prevents the knee from going too far backwards. The plastic is dished and the metal can bend and straighten on the plastic, but that is one type of knee replacement where we preserve the PCL or posterior cruciate ligament. Now the other knee implant, and this is an old knee design, um, but what you'll notice here is that there's a little tab or what we call a post. So when we do a knee replacement, we're cutting out a box. So you can see that there's this fragment here where we actually have to cut bone to allow it to fit this metal. This goes on the thigh bone part. This goes on the shin bone part. And now when you bend and straighten the knee, there's this post that you can see there in the back. And if the knee slides backwards, you might hear or feel a click. So if you have a knee replacement that's a posterior stabilized knee, you'll hear or feel that click when you're at 90 degrees of bend. And that post is taking the place of the posterior cruciate ligament. Now, just to complicate things a little bit more, there have been a number of knee designs over the decades of what we call a medial pivot knee. And what this is basically, this is another knee implant, but what you can see is how the metal mates very intimately with the plastic. It's basically a ball in a socket. That's on the inside or medial side. And if we turn this around and look at the lateral side, you can see it's not as um, tight of a contact. It allows it to pivot or rotate the way the knee is designed. And these knees have been found to be very stable. So in these knees, some of them are designed where you can keep the PCL if you so choose to, but you can also excise the PCL or sacrifice the PCL. And sometimes to actually make the knee bend and rotate well, you have to get rid of the PCL. Again, it, it, if you leave it, it can be tight in certain degrees of bend and it causes that thing we call kinematic conflict. Now, these knees have been so successful that many knee replacement companies that have a knee implant, and most companies have a cruciate retaining and a posterior stabilized, so a CR and a PS plastic insert. A lot of those companies have designed to, or have designed a middle ground to closely mimic the medial congruent or medial pivot knees. So Stryker has an implant called the CS, condylar stabilized. Zimmer has an implant polyethylene called the MC or medial congruent. Depew has a polyethylene insert called MS or medial stabilized. So all of these companies are trying to come out with an implant plastic that is between a cruciate retaining and between a posterior stabilized to more mimic that ball and socket idea to give constraint. Now your cruciate ligaments, we talked about your ACL, PCL, they're your primary restraints to front and back motion. Your menisci, the medial and lateral meniscus, are secondary restraints. So they have that cupped position that prevents the knee from sliding back and forward. 
beyond what the cruise sheet would do. And that's the idea of these plastic inserts. They have to offer many times both primary and secondary constraint so the knee replacement doesn't move back and forth. Now, most surgeons will have a preference, but the good news is that you can change on the fly. So if we're doing a knee replacement and we plan on plastic insert A and the knee is unstable, we can go to plastic B. Let's say we go in to do a cruciate retaining knee, but the PCL is damaged or torn or stretched. We can do one of those constrained plastic inserts all the way up to the posterior stabilized insert. So that's an option. Now, if the knee has an injury, so let's say prior to surgery or during surgery, the collateral ligaments are damaged. So again, those are those side ligaments. Maybe you have a severe deformity, you're really knock kneed, and that inside ligament called the MCL is stretched out. And if that's the case, or during surgery, if unfortunately there's an injury to the MCL, maybe the saw cuts the MCL, and there's laxity side to side, we have special implants that we can put in that give constraint, not just to the front and back, but to side to side. So it's a post similar to this post, but it's a much taller and wider post. And what that is doing is giving you constraint front and back, but also side to side. Now let's say we go a step further. Let's say there's really severe damage to the collateral ligaments where they're very, very loose. We have another option called a hinge. And this is where the thigh bone and the shin bone actually bolt together. So they literally lock together with a pin and that gives the highest level of constraint. So we go from very unconstrained where your ligaments are intact all the way up to the most constrained where the ligaments are not intact or deficient. Now the upside downside is that if you have severe arthritis or maybe some fracture or ligament tear, we can replace it. So we can still do a knee replacement with this constrained device called a hinge. The downside is that the more constraint you put in a knee replacement, the shorter the longevity. You may have hear, heard me talk about the data before that shows that at 20 years, 90% of knee replacements are still fine. But as you add levels of constraint, there's more force on the interface between the bone and the implant or the bone and the cement. Um, and that can lead to loosening, which means that you might need another replacement down the road. So that's knee replacement 101 when it comes to ligaments. So again, in brief review, collateral ligaments on the side, inside medial, outside lateral, MCL, LCL. The idea is to keep them, to preserve them, to balance them. We protect them during surgery, but if they are by accident cut, injured, damaged, or before surgery stretched out, we do have ligaments that offer side-to-side -side stability we can add constraint to your knee replacement to make up for laxity or damage to those collateral ligaments. The ACL or anterior cruciate ligament frequently is resected even if it is there. And in many knee replacements, when we open the knee up, it is not there or damaged. There are a small minority of surgeons that are doing these bi cruciate retaining knee replacements where they preserve the ACL and PCL. But the most controversial ligament in the total knee replacement world is the PCL or posterior cruciate ligament. You have camps that preserve the PCL and they do predominantly cruciate retaining knee replacements. You have sacrificing camps where they cut out the PCL and do posterior stabilized implants. Now, if that's not confusing enough, we have surgeons that have options to now do something halfway in between and what's called these medial pivot knees. There are a number of companies that have specific ball and socket medial pivot knees, but every company out there is now offering a plastic insert, which is similar to that and offers more constraint on the inside of the knee or the medial side of the knee that gives more of that front to back support and constraint to make up for the lack of the meniscus and to give support to the cruciates if they're there or if they're sacrificed. Now, the important thing, and like always, is I'm not telling you because there really isn't an answer to what is the best implant. Otherwise, every surgeon in the world would be putting in one implant. What is extremely important for you is to find a high volume total knee replacement surgeon that does many, many knee replacements on a regular basis. 
they're gonna be familiar with many knee implant designs. And what we know is that most patients would do well with any of the major vendors out there. But you want them to be able to have all of these options in their armamentarium. So if during surgery, based on your anatomy, there's an issue with plan A, that they can transition to plan B or C, changing up the plastic insert or the level of constraint to give you the best total knee replacement possible. So that's everything. Hopefully it answers your questions. I'm Adam Rosen. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, stay safe.